In 1983, Tony Jacklin's captaincy introduced a different approach for the Europeans. It would be on my terms, he said. It would be first class. He said everything would have to be first class from the air travel to the equipment, he said, or not at all. My mission wasn't to play everybody every day. It wasn't to be nice to all the guys all the time. It was to get the best out of 12 men and win the Ryder Cup. I needed uh, to win the last hole to tie Canizares for us to win 14 and a half, 13 and a half. I hit a, a bit of 72 yard sand wedge about a foot from the hole to win the hole and enable us to win. To pull it off under those circumstances was something I remembered for a long time. Hey guys, why are you looking so sad? This is the, really the first time that we have a, a, a good chance to, uh, to beat the Americans. Do you really like uh, that? And uh, everyone look at each other and say, ah, it's true. Since then, the things changed. And things did change at the Belfry in 1985. In the first day, foursomes by Asteris and Manuel Pinero beat Curtis Strange and Marco Mera two and one, winning the tricky par four tenth along the way. We knew we could do it. That was basically what we had talked about in the in the locker room, and you know everyone believed that we could do it because we came so close two years earlier, and we felt we had a strong team. We we're playing at home, and we really felt we could defeat the Americans. And that feeling grew even stronger when Craig Stadler missed from two feet for victory in the second day four balls. All square with Andy North with one to play. Sam Torrance found the green with his approach. North's tee shot came down in a watery grave and the American failed to make his five. Torrance knew he had two putts to win the Ryder Cup for Europe and his walk down the final fairway resembled a victory parade. One putt was all it required and 28 years of waiting was over. I didn't know where to be, what to do, what channel to be on, I just, oh. It's going to take a long time for this to, to sink in. It was just fantastic. When Europe travelled to Muirfield Village, the course designed by the American captain Jack Nicholas, the United States were defending a home record of 13 consecutive victories, yet the tables were overturned. We have win in America for the first time on American soil in 87. That was euphoric. That was, that was it. Europe, five points ahead going into the singles, were grateful to Irishman Eamon Darcy for stemming an American fight back with victory over Ben Crenshaw. And when Ballesteros beat the world's number one, Curtis Strange, two and one at the 17th, the celebrations could begin. Making uh, the, the winning point when I beat uh, Curtis Strange, uh, that was very special. And I, I still remember when Nick Faldo was running across the green and, and gave me a big uh, hug. It was fantastic. It was very special. It was the first time that uh, we beat uh, the Americans in the American soil. And that was very special, too. Very special. It was a very emotional time. I come over all unnecessary when I think about it even now. It's great. It was it was it. Pretty good uh, pretty good afternoon that was. In 1989, as Europe returned to the Belfry, momentum was clearly with them. However, America under Captain Raymond Floyd were feisty opponents. Christy O'Connor's victory over Fred Couples was one of eight singles that reached the final green. 
And when Jose Maria Canizares rolled in a three-footer to beat Ken Green on the 18th, Europe were grateful to retain the trophy after only the second tie in Ryder Cup history. Under Jacqueline's captaincy, the Europeans restored pride in the locker room, claiming the Ryder Cup on three occasions.